This is a capacitor, a device that can temporarily store electrical energy and then release it again. But how exactly does it work? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in this new episode of Akio TV. So let's get started. If we take a battery and we connect a wire to the positive side and we connect that wire to the negative side, then electricity is going to run through that wire. So what's going to happen is that electrons are going to flow from negative to positive. Now you may think, what the hell is that? Because electricity is always running from positive to negative, isn't it? That's true. Let me explain why that is. Electrons are negative particles and when a negative particle moves from negative to positive then the current is actually running from positive to negative if you don't understand that let me give you an example imagine that there is there is a minus two euro coin so there is a coin that is worth minus two euros and I gave the coin to you then you are actually paying me two euros aren't you so now that we know that electrons are flowing in the opposite direction of the actual current, we can take a look at how a capacitor works. A capacitor consists out of two metal plates with an isolating material in between them. That isolating material can be anything, it can be paper, plastic, sometimes even gas, and it's usually called the dielectric. Now, what is going to happen when we charge the capacitor, so when we connect the capacitor to a battery? Well, in this situation, you can see a blue N next to each of the plates. That means that the plates are neutral. They aren't charged. They aren't positively or negatively charged. Now, let's see what happens when we connect those plates to the positive and negative side of a battery. This is what's going to happen. From the negative side of the battery, electrons are going to flow into plate number one. Now, of course, every material has electrons inside. Also, plate one has electrons inside. But now, all those extra electrons from the negative side of the battery get squeezed into it. So it gets full of electrons. It gets too many electrons inside it. This means that it's not going to be neutrally charged anymore. It's now going to be negatively charged because it has all those negative electrons inside it. The other plate, however, is going to drain electrons because the positive side of the battery is actually sucking the electrons out of plate number two. So plate number two actually gets a lack of electrons. So that means it has a lack of negative particles, so it's going to be positively charged. After charging the capacitor, this is what the situation looks like. We've got plate 1 with a negative charge and plate 2 with a positive charge. Inside plate 2 there are almost no electrons, there is lots of space. And in plate 1, the negatively charged plate, the electrons are crammed together, there are too many of them. And of course, negative attracts positive and vice versa. So the electrons desperately want to go to plate number two. They desperately want to go to the positive plate. But the dielectric is in the way. The dielectric is an isolating material. It doesn't conduct electricity, so it prevents the electrons from going to plate number two. The only way how the electrons can go to plate number two is when the plates actually touch each other or through a wire that is actually connecting both plates. Now, as you might have seen, we've replaced the battery with a light bulb. Now, if we connect the wires to the light bulb, then the electrons can go through the wire, through the light bulb, through another wire to plate number two. Now, remember that current is running in the opposite direction of electrons, so the current is going from plate two to plate one through the light bulb, which means that the light bulb is going to light up. The light bulb is going on. So now we use the charge that we put into the capacitor using the battery. Now we are discharging the capacitor. At a certain point, however, the light bulb goes off again because 
at a certain point, the lack of electrons inside plate number 2 has been compensated and the oversized amount of electrons in plate number 1 has reduced. So now both plates have a neutral charge again. At this point, the capacitor has been discharged. And that is how a capacitor works. That is the entire process of charging a capacitor and discharging it again. Now I think it's time for a short demonstration of what a capacitor can actually do. This is a capacitor this is a power supply. We're going to charge the capacitor like this. We're going to touch the output of the power supply for a very short time, even shorter than one second, because this thing charges insanely quick. In three, two, one, done. And we're going to discharge it like that. You see that spark? That's our demonstration of the capacitor. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and Thanks for watching.